Hey guys, today we're unboxing and giving you our first impressions of the new Trudon by Vividino or Formbot. And this particular one is 400 by 400 by 500. It's a big one, stay tuned. So at this point, we've obviously unboxed it. it came in a gigantic crate on the floor here. Um, and I've done nothing as far as setup or unpackaging other than removing the box of parts uh, from, from the, the sitting on top of the bed, essentially. Uh, the first thing I wanna mention is all of these plexiglass panels had uh, protective plastic film on them, and you can still kind of see a little bit of around the hinges. So while the film comes off great off of all the other panels, on here, it's underneath the handle, so you have to remove the handle to get that. You're gonna have to remove both of these hinges to really get those last little pieces. And I also had to unscrew that screw there. Um, not a big deal, but I'll get to that uh, at some point in the near future. So we have obviously a very large printer and a very large door. Uh, myself, I have a Voron 2.4, mine's 350 millimeters, so a little bit smaller than this guy. One thing I really do appreciate is having 270 degree hinges here so that this door can fold all the way back flat against the side here, especially when you're printing something like PLA. So PLA, you know, you're using cooling with PLA. It can get quite hot inside here. Um, in my particular case, I have it insulated uh, and it gets about 60 degrees ambient in there when I'm printing things like ABS. Um, a little bit lower, obviously, with PLA, but you're gonna want the door open to get that fresh, cool air in there. And having that door able to fold completely flat and out of the way is, is a really nice touch. Um, so we have lots of... Lots of styrofoam, which we've already dealt with most of it. Uh, the tool head was not moving anywhere. It was very nicely packaged. You can see these gigantic zip ties down to these little like eye hooks here that are holding the entire assembly down. Um, it was pressed against the box that I pulled out of there and, uh, and foam like that. And of course, we have a spring steel uh, build surface, which is a PEI sticker, so it's smooth. It's not like a textured one. There's nothing on the opposite side. Uh, pretty thick magnet that has pretty good grip on this, <laughs> on this surface, which makes it kind of difficult to line up perfectly with the, the bottom bed. It's very aggressive, but that's good because you don't want this prying up at the corners if you have a very uh, warpy material that you're printing on there. Um, a very, very large, and we saw this on the original Trudon as well, we have a very large cable chain. Um, it's gigantic because the wires that they're using through there are quite thick, actually. Um, in my case, I'm using Heluflon wiring and uh, the entire wiring bundle fits in like a 10 or 15 millimeter cable chain. So not only is the wiring lighter, but uh, the cable chain will be lighter. Um, and I expected the cable chain to actually have two cable chains, one for the X and one for the Y. They've kept with this one large cable chain assembly. Um, the, a few changes that they made, you know, we always had the original Gates belts on the other version there. Um, they changed the rails that they're using, so now they're using stainless rails. I understand that some of the original rails, maybe in the earlier versions, uh, they could end up getting like surface rust on them. Uh, now, if you're ever, you know, wiping down or washing your build surface, I wouldn't do it in the printer. Just keep the water and moisture and everything uh, out of there. Take it out, wash it in the sink, dry it off and put it back in, you know. Um, and as far as like PEI, if you're printing PLA, everything's gonna stick to that. If you're printing other materials, you might want to have a different build surface, to be honest. Uh, and in this case, you're gonna need an entire different spring steel sheet um, to match the size of the bed, of course. So you've got typical bed uh, on these types of printers is uh, like a machined aluminum, Mic6, ATP5, something like that. I'm not sure what they're using here, though it does appear to be about six millimeters thick or, or so. Um, I haven't looked at the specs to see exactly how thick it is. And then laminated to the bottom of that, there's gonna be a AC uh, bed heater, right? The entire machine is rated for 1150 watts. So if I had to guess, I would say that puts the bed heater at about 750 watts, give or take. Um, which makes sense when you work out the ideal wattage per square centimeter of, of build surface. Um, that's, that's right in the ballpark anyway. One concern I know that people had with the original Trudon was the um, hot end assembly could kind of wobble up and down. Um, it, you know, it's only attached to one rail on the top. So to solve that, much like the original Voron design, the X rail here is actually two linear rails. 
Um, and on the bottom of the hot end carriage here, they do have a provision to bolt in another carriage on the bottom of this, uh, this 2020 here. Um, so then there would definitely be no opportunity for that to kind of tip or wobble up and down. Um, having said that though, I know this is all still tied in there. There's very little slop here. So some of that slop may have been, you know, the bearings or the preload or lack thereof, or just machining tolerances. Um, so adding a second rail is in that case, kind of like a band-aid solution, but starting off with a good rail is a, is a good first step. And if you really do think you need it, add that second one on. With all that said, I wanna now get these straps off of here. We do have a little bit of assembly to do. I know it's pitched as a fully assembled printer and in comparison to assembling this yourself, trust me, it is. Uh, we still have to attach the filter on the back here and the fan. Um, we just have to connect the wires for the lights um, and a, a couple of odds and ends, add an antenna on it for the Wi-Fi and whatnot. So with all that said, let's get those straps off and start uh, opening the assembly manual, manual and see exactly what steps we have to take. So I flipped it around and I made a, might have misspoke earlier. So at the back right hand corner, so now our top left, there were two wires and I think I said we gotta connect the LEDs. <laughs> They're not for the LEDs, the LEDs are pre-wired down the other corner over here. Um, so I ran these two wires out the back here. One of them is for the filament runout sensor, which I already added here. And this is a direct drive extruder. They're using like the Orbiter 1.5 kind of setup, um, which by the way, looks to be all uh, injection molded. Um, so the Filament runout sensor is gonna be back here, which is about a meter from the actual hot end. So even when it senses that you've run out, you've still got a meter of filament left and that's kind of gonna be garbage. Your only other option would be to move this much closer to the print head, maybe right before it goes in the print head. Um, but by default, this is where it belongs. The other connector here is for the fan on the HEPA filter that goes on the back here. Um, so this is pretty simple. It connects to the back with four screws, one, two, three, four. And then the Bowden tube here, which is really just a guide tube at this point, it's not really acting as a Bowden tube, goes through the back there like that. Down here, we'll have the spool holder, which already has some T-nuts and bolts pre-installed. So slides in there like that. You wanna make sure that those T-nuts properly engage in the slot, as I always say. They give you a full complement of Allen keys to install this as well. They give you a screwdriver, which is gonna be useful when you're pulling off the hinges and handle. Um, and I forgot to mention, but you also have to pull off the magnetic closures on that front door to get the plastic around them. And that's what you use this Phillips head screwdriver for. Just before we go too much further, I'll make sure that this is on there nice and snug. And they do give you a full kilo of PLA. Um, so unlike some of those little tiny rolls, or in some cases it doesn't even come on a spool. Uh, and of course, I just cut the bag open and it's a nice resealable bag, it's typical. Usually I just open it like a savage. So we'll throw that on there for now. That will route up here, follow the direction of the arrow. So we're going this direction and then it'll go inside here. They do have like a little slot here that looks like it'll kind of hold the, uh, there we go, the tube like that. And then this guy will go this way, like that, okay. Um, so I'll just kind of dangle there. And then in this other bag, they do have some spare parts. So there's one of, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's one of those little magnets for the door. that's actually stuck to this little thumb screw. There's two more hinges and there's a Bowden tube clip, one of those little retaining clips in there. Um, so some extra bits. Of course, the Wi-Fi antenna that screws onto the front left hand corner, which I haven't attached yet. And then two really beefy handles. Uh, the handles are great for moving this thing around. There's two on the front there that we leverage to get this up on the table in the first place. These two go on the top. So all of the panels on the printer were pre-installed. You know, they've got these screws and, and uh, uh, hammer nuts on them, but the top one is just sitting here loose. So these two little cutouts are for the handles. Um, I've oriented them, you know, left to right so that there's a handle on either side, so that you'll now have two handles on the front and one on either side to kind of carry it like that. Um, these uh, look like they're cast aluminum of sorts, um, and they've got the T-nuts installed as well, so those will sit up there. We'll install it just like we did the spool holder, make sure those turn and engage. There is a full-size SD card. It slides in the top of the screen. The instruction manual and everything is on here, true on user manual. 
Um, of course, I don't have a laptop with me tonight um, and neither does my, my video guy here. So uh, we're just gonna wing it. Um, it's pretty simple, as you see. It would be different if we were building this like from scratch, like a kit machine, you might want a little bit more instruction, but everything here is pretty self-explanatory. There is a, almost looks like a stylus. Now, I have no idea what this would be used for. So that will be something I'll have to refer to the manual later. Um, could be like a pin removal tool for something. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna make sure I don't lose that. And then the last bag that we have is just the tiny screws that are gonna hold that uh, filter onto the back there. So I'm gonna install the filter. I'll route some filament through to the front. We'll flip it around. We can install the, um, the Wi-Fi uh, antenna and, uh, and then we'll turn it on and take a look at the screen. All right, we're done. That was really, really painless. Um, a couple things I wanted to mention. I know that I complained about the door and yes, it does get in the way. Um, if they did like a French door, that would resolve that. 270 degree hinge, again, still nice. But as far as printing PLA goes, when I installed the handles on the top, I realized that there is no provision to actually permanently install this. It just slides off. So. If I do need to make sure that it's not getting too warm in there as I'm printing my PLA, and for whatever reasons, I want the door shut, whether it's to keep my kids out of there or my cat in my case, um, I can do so. Uh, so this will allow all the ambient heat to escape and it should not get too hot in there for PLA. Um, so it may not end up being that big of a concern. I still think, you know, removing a panel it's likely to get scratched the more I do that. Um, you know, it's a little bit less convenient, but I'm also just honestly being picky at this point. So we got the lights along the back and we've got a 4.3 inch, 4.5 inch or so display. Um, so this is running RepRap firmware. So this would be similar to like a panel do kind of display. Um, it is resistive. It's not a capacitive touchscreen, um, but it does the job. Uh, I did notice right off the bat that there is a dark theme, which to me is a lot more appealing. Um, so you can do all your normal controls, you can set your temperature, you can home. Um, and speaking of homing, so we have two kinds of bed leveling. One I would really call truly tramming. It's a quad gantry level, QGL. So it will probe the corners of the bed. And then because we have independent motors and belts on each corner, uh, it will actually tram the XY plane with the plane of the bed so that they will be completely coplanar to each other or, or completely uh, parallel to one another, right? So that's one set. And now in addition to that, if your bed is not 100% flat, you know, if this is a Mike 6 or ATP 5, it's probably within 0.2 millimeters, like corner to corner flatness. But if it is not, um, you still have the BL touch, which will do like an X number of grid probe and it will you know, synthetically level your bed and essentially follow the contour of the bed, right? So it builds that topographical map like we've seen on all the other printers. Um, and then, you know, if your bed was dished like this, as it moves over, it would actually move down to follow the contour of the bed. So it stays a consistent height, right? Um, so QGL is great. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, your, your X arm sagging on one side if you have single Z. You don't have to worry about, um, thumb screws or anything like that, it's just done automatically for you. Um, you wanna do that, of course, like normal at temperature. Um, and typically, for, in the way I do it, is I make sure that my machine has had a decent amount of heat soak. Um, so there have been studies done that show that the frame and all the other components do elongate a little bit after upwards of 40 minutes of heat soaking. They're still changing, dimensionally changing, right? Um, at the very least, you wanna make sure that the bed is completely uniformly at temperature before doing that. I usually give it maybe five to 10 minutes, kind of as I'm slicing, I'm already just preheating to make sure that it's, it's warm. Um, but really the more preheat you give it, the more accurate it will be, especially over a long uh, print time, right? Um, and in the grand scheme of things, a 10 hour print, an extra 20 minutes of, of heating, uh, the preheating at the beginning is really not that big of a deal. Um, the literature does say that it is a Kinovo uh, bed heater, which is great. That's what I have on mine. That's really what you wanna have as Kinovo as far as AC heaters go. Um, and of course it's controlled by a solid state relay um, underneath the, the build plate here. 
Um, on the back of the machine, you do have a USB-B port. Uh, I'm not sure why I'd use that at this point. I mean, it's Wi-Fi connected. I can send my print jobs remotely. Um, I'm not interested in hooking up a USB cable, but if you need to, especially maybe for some diagnostics or something, uh, you have that option in the back. Um, it's quiet, you know, you don't hear much. As expected on a machine like this, the hot end fan is temperature controlled, so probably 50, 60, 70 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark, that fan will spin up, and then when it gets below that threshold on the cooling side, it shuts itself down. The cooling fans, you have little shrouds on either side. They're small 4010 fans. Um, I much prefer a 4020 or a 5015, uh, you know, blower fan, uh, even, even one <laughs> with a decent shroud. Um, but they're fine. I just find they don't blow a whole lot of air and they tend to fail prematurely in comparison to 4020s or 5015s. Um, but of course they're a smaller package and they, you know, they fit nicer onto the hot end assembly there. Um, the orbiter, as I mentioned, is this guy right at the top. Uh, has a little uh, thumb screw here with a spring tension adjustment. Um, just pinch that to pull the filament out, pinch it to put it in. It is a dual drive gear. It's probably using the Bontex style gears. So grabbing from either side. And it is a geared extruder as well using the tiny, um, the tiny style uh, stepper motor on the back. So that would be a 0.9 degree stepper for sure. Um, I suspect that both the A and B or the X and Y it's not really X and Y in a core XY, but the A and B stepper motor, that both of those are probably also 0.9 degrees. There is zero reason for the Z uh, motors to be 0.9. So there is a, a ridiculous gear ratio on these motors. The, the main gear is about this big and the small one's like that, uh, 13 to one, 14 to one, something like that. Um, so the precision that you can get on the Z, even with a 1.8 degree stepper, is way more than you're going to need. Um, so they're, they're more than likely uh, 1.8 degrees as expected. Um, I, I went and checked all the belts. They're tensioned decently. Um, I found that this one front Z is much looser than the others. Um, and there are guides online for proper belt tensioning, especially around the XY uh, series of belts. Um, you move this uh, 150 millimeters center to center from that gear to the gear that it wraps around. And then it's supposed to be about 120 Hertz. I don't know, don't quote me, look it up. Um, the resources are out there on the, uh, on the Voron GitHub is where I would refer you uh, for that information. On the Z, the tension really is less critical. You don't want them to be slop. Ideally, I'd want them to be all equally tensioned and that's kind of good enough. Um, you know, the weight of the XY assembly is pulling down on those belts. Um, it's, it's really not nearly as much a concern as uh, the two belts on the X and Y can be. Uh, especially if they're out of tension, it can kind of cause almost racking-like issues where it wants to torsion that, uh, that frame assembly in one direction or the other. Um, so I, oh yeah, I installed the uh, Wi-Fi antenna as well. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Uh, I mentioned it earlier because I forgot to show it at the beginning. Here's the two little magnets that I had to unscrew uh, to get the plastic out from under them. And those connect to two little T-nuts on the, on the top and bottom there. So I think, you know, they've made some improvements over the original. It's definitely much larger. I know that as well, they have improved the electronics. Their standard 32-bit boards. I think they were using 2660 Trinamic drivers. I'm not sure exactly what they're using on this. Uh, and I know that the connection between the board and the screen was a little bit wonky on the old one, and that's apparently been also corrected. Um, but I don't have any first-hand knowledge of those things, so I don't want to speak too deeply to them. Um, that's it. I mean, mostly assembled, so there wasn't a whole lot to do. I know that PJ downstairs here is just itching uh, to get his hands on this thing. He's got uh, one at home, an original Trudon at home, and he uses the one in the shop all the time. So he's really our resident expert on these machines. Uh, I know that he's also itching to do some upgrades because that's how he is. So stay tuned for more information on the Trudon and a longer term review in the near future. Thanks for watching.